Brand new long range FPV drone on the channel today. The seven inch Axis Flying Colas 7. Let's get into it. Okay guys, this is a pretty epic, awesome review, especially if you've never flown long range FPV before. If you have, you can skip ahead uh, maybe the next two or three minutes. Right now, I'm gonna give the FPV community some super important information about flying long range for the first time. If you've ever, ever, ever flown a seven inch, you know these things already. Um, but I'm gonna share some friendly advice for the new guys. Maybe this is gonna be your first seven inch. So um, number one rule of flying long range, guys, fly by blades. If you want a longer flight, don't fly tri-blades. Tri-blades, keep them on your five inch. Um, they're not very efficient for long range. Get rid of them. Fly by blade props. Find the thinnest cord prop that you can find. Uh, I'm speaking the width this way and that way and the least amount of pitch because if you have a super aggressive pitch, just going to draw more amps. It's going to eat up more of your flight time. Um, you can also fly this one in Lion packs, which I'll put some links down below for Lion and I'll put a lipo option down there in the 5,000 milliamp range. You can also carry something like a GoPro on here or the Insta 361 RS that I'm going to use again today for this flight test. And today is the windiest flight day test of any seven inch that I've had in the past three months. So this is going to be ultra interesting. And when it's windy with a seven inch you're going to see more jello in the camera so we'll see how the one rs does with a ton of wind um, but also guys another tip is that when you do use the by blade props you're going to reduce the airframe's vibration by a lot because the tri blades produce more vibration back to the flight controller which translates to the camera resulting in jello so the next big thing that you need to do please do this before you go out test your gps make sure that rescue mode is turned on do not have it set to drop if you don't get a home lock then you have no gps rescue make sure that you have enough satellites you get a home lock and inside beta flight you want to make sure that rescue is turned on and go to the gps tab make sure that you're getting packets as well get close to a window in your house or even walk outside with your laptop. Make sure you're getting full sat coverage on this quad and that you have GPS return to home also on a switch on your transmitter. Super, super important. If you fly out and you're going somewhere over uh, the ocean or water or down, uh, say, a river bed and you're down in a canyon somewhere, if you lose signal, if you're set to drop, you're going straight in the water, there is no recovery. Once GPS is turned on, when you're on that trajectory, you lose signal, boom, it's going to level out and come back up. So that is GPS rescue working properly. You need to test do your first four or five flights over top of land. Also, don't send it out over the ocean for the first or second flight, thinking that everything on this system is working correctly. Every time you get a bind and fly quad, it's important to go over the whole thing as well with a driver. Check all the bolts on here. Double check the motor bolts going through the frame to the motors and all the frame bolts. Uh, also, this is a folding quad, so you wanna make sure that, by God, you want to make sure that these are extended and in the lock position before you take off with this because you don't want one of these arms moving back and forth uh, causing a, a frame strike while you're out there. Um, so things can go really bad really quickly, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the flight test now. I'm going to show you this beast take off, do some flying around on now the windiest day. And after that, we'll come back on the bench and I'm going to show you what this Cola 7 is all about for a Binafly LR option and LR is long range guys. Here we go. All right guys, just wanted you to see the trees moving down low. When we have low surface wind, that means it's really windy upstairs. So today in this flight test, it's gonna be the windiest day of any seven inch flight test. Um, yeah, it's probably blowing 35 up top. So uh, about a hundred foot up, definitely blowing 25 to 35 on the gusts so we'll see how it does okay guys let's go ahead and get this flight test underway you can skip to the bench part next if you want to because there's some super important information if you're looking to fly seven inch for the first time i've got the ultimate beginner advice in the next part of this video so let's get right into it the cola 7 from axis flying it's doing 
pretty good on my flight test. In my goggles, I don't hardly see in, I, I almost see no vibration, but in my Insta360 ONE RS video, I came back with quite a bit of vibration today. I mean, we do have 25 to 35 mile an hour gusts today and an average of 20. Um, so it, with any seven inch out there, you're gonna get vibrations. People have been talking about this vibration on the forums um, and anybody that's experienced seven inch for the first time, it's a lot harder to tune a seven inch than it is a five uh, or a six inch. Uh, as you get bigger, the harder they are to tune. So getting the vibrations out of your seven inch takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of skill, but it can be done. And you have to tune it to the prop that you're flying. So maybe this tune with my bi-blade prop, maybe it's given us a little more vibration today, but it shouldn't. Bi-blade should reduce the amount of vibration. So I'm guessing that maybe from an educated standpoint that a three bladed prop might give us more vibration than what you see here. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, that's just my experience in the long run. Biblade is much smoother and it's more efficient, giving you a longer flight time. And up high is where you can really see the jello, but hey, 35 mile an hour wind. Um, this quad has a lot of weight to it, but not enough to withstand some jello from this kind of wind. It's not the perfect day to fly. We could even do another flight test on the channel coming up with this on a perfect day. Maybe I take out all the seven inches and we have a seven inch showdown because we have a lot of seven inches in right now. So uh, if you're looking for a foldable seven inch cinema drone, a send it rig, this one's not bad. But let's go back to the bench right now. Let's talk about this on the bench because I have some really important long range seven inch information for you guys that might save you from crashing yours. Here we go. All right, guys, welcome to today's review. We got some serious stuff to talk about today, especially if you're thinking about getting a seven inch, hang out for the next three minutes because I'm gonna talk about some things that might save your first seven inch long range experience. This is super, super important. And I have seen other channels out there testing other seven inch where yes, they went into the water. We're not gonna name names, but lessons were learned. And um, sometimes you just don't quite think about the consequences of having just one component on this quad fail. Um, whenever you get a Binafly, number one, you, remember, you're testing your quad for the first 20 flights before you really send it out there. Um, field test it, not over water. You want to make sure that you have a long stretch of field to go out and back. If you can go find uh, out in the country somewhere, take this somewhere where there's no buildings, uh, cities, cars, buildings, dogs, trucks, whatever, airports. Um, take it way out there where you can just really kind of go down maybe a rock road. So if you do fail safe down on the ground, that, hey, you can drive your car down the road and you can probably find it on the side of the road. So follow a, a dirt road or something like that out. And that way you're not off into a field somewhere. Um, super important. But uh, the other thing is when you're flying a seven inch, uh, I got a huge suggestion for you. You notice how mine always has the bi-blade props on there. Guys that really know what they're doing with a seven inch long range, they're not flying these tri-blades. Tri-blades are for freestyle. Um, they're not for the longest flight time on any quad. If you want to get a larger quad, fly these. They're going to be more efficient. Um, there's another reason why you fly by, by blades on a quad because it's going to give you much less frame vibration. And the bigger the quad is, the more vibration back to your camera and your FPV camera. So if you go down to basically what I'm saying is prop down here, reduction of one blade in this equation um, and one on every single motor, that's four less blades on this quad, and that's four times uh, less the amount of vibration. So very important. Um, number two is do not by any means use this DJI transmitter on any of the O3 units. Um, I talked about this before. If you fail safe or if the video goes out, um, the problem is, is that when the video goes out on the O3, yeah, you're gonna lose RC link for five seconds. And if you don't have GPS rescue mode set up, what's this thing gonna do? It's gonna go into a, a regular fail safe option, which is a drop to the ground. And if you're over water, it's going in. Um, so <laughs> you wanna make sure that you set up your GPS inside beta flight. Make sure that you 
fly this out, test it um, uh, beyond the uh, 300 foot range, flip into GPS return to home, put it on a switch, make sure that you see packets being received inside beta flight. And one of the other things that you really need to do is make sure that um, uncheck arm without home lock is not checked on. You don't want this thing to arm without pointing uh, to the home point. If it doesn't make a home point, uh, then you have no rescue mode. Rescue mode will be turned off and in your OSD, when, when and before you take off, Betaflight is gonna warn you and say rescue off. You'll see it on the screen. That means you're gonna fail safe to the ground. Um, so it's gonna default to the default fail safe there. Super important. So you have to go out, make sure that GPS return and rescue is on one of your switches. I usually put mine on AUX3. Um, and the next thing is that when you're flying out there long range, it's very important to have two flight modes on here. Uh, well, three and counting the GPS rescue. Uh, number one, you wanna take off in angle mode, uh, which is also known as stability mode. That way, when you take off, you get a good altitude. So you can switch into acro and go on your flight. Now, if you fail safe, and you have GPS rescue set up, when you're in acro mode, as you're flying along down a canyon or over a river, this has saved me before with Chimera series drones. I've been flying down a canyon, boom, I've, I fail safed, even crossfire um, dropped out on me and I immediately went to rescue mode. So the quad momentarily levels out and then it goes back into acro mode. So um, you might see your quad do this if you're, if you're losing signal. Otherwise, I would have dropped into the water uh, over the river. So if you're flying long range, be sure your GPS is properly set up and field tested. And field tested just means taking out to that long road somewhere and testing it out. Um, if it drops to the ground uh, inside the 300 foot radius, then you need to fly outside that radius. Inside the 300 foot radius, it, it will normally just fail safe like normal. Uh, beta flight may have changed that at this point, but it's very important that you do all these steps before you start flying your first seven inch. Um, and, and angle mode, speaking of angle mode on this quad, being able to switch back into angle mode, if you have a video system go out on you while you're out and flying this, um, the first thing that I do instinctively immediately switch into angle mode because you don't want to be flying along in acro. You completely lose your, your video. That doesn't mean that you've lost RC link a lot of times unless you're using this controller, which you should not never be using on um, just about any FPV drone right now. Use crossfire. Um, but that way, if you do lose video, you can flip back into that stability mode, the angle mode, and level yourself out and the next thing you want to do is start gaining altitude so that uh, do a punch out, go straight up a couple hundred feet in the air, and you're going to regain video signal back because these guys will catch up back to your goggles once you get to a higher altitude. Uh, and whatever that obstruction was in the way is not going to be in the way anymore. So uh, when in doubt, punch out. Now, I talked about this drone a while back in one of my live streams. We did an unboxing and I compared it a little bit to the Chimera from iFlight. Now, um, one thing you have to know about this quad, the Cola 7 versus the Chimera V2 here is that the Chimera has uh, a little wider arm in the front. So we have a little wider wingspan with this one. Um, this one might give you a little less vibrations uh, because it does have a much bigger wingspan on here. You can also probably get seven and a half inch props on this one as well. So we have quite a bit of extra room here between the frame of the, this one and the Colas. So um, right here on the Colas 7, there's not a whole lot of clearance. So you guys have to be super careful about where you're mounting your GoPros because you can see right there that seven inch prop comes swing right by that TPU mount. So you want to be super careful there. Um, the other thing is that this is a foldable quad. Um, it, it freaks me out because when I'm going to launch uh, before I do, I'm absolutely kind of looking for anything that uh, maybe potentially on this quad not locked into place. Um, all the arms had to go over them several times and just kind of crank on them and make sure that they're not loose uh, or not locked into place. Now there are two spots on this frame where you can break it down. So right underneath the, the, the uh, camera mount right here, there's a little switch, a little tab and um, kind of freaks me out that it's right there because if you have something move in here, I just, I just worry that this could somehow get um, moved. But 
takes a lot of force to actually activate it. So you'd almost have to crash for that to be pushed down to release these arms. Uh, I feel like the truck body on here is nice and long. We are also flying the F7 flight controller on here and you can fly it on 4S LiPos and 6S LiPos, by the way. They have a two antenna setup back here with antennas that are long enough to reach above the quad, which is really awesome. Uh, I have an XT60 here, TPU mount. I like the way they also have a larger GPS, much better GPS lock and satellite uh, signal strength there than some of the smaller BN220s. So uh, I, I think this was a nice, nice, movable one as well. So there's a little M2 bolt right here. Loosen that one up and you can change the angle as well. So if you have more of a camera angle up here, you can make it tilt further back um, and get a higher angle to get the right satellite. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, we have some newer motors on here. These are 1350 kV. So these are somewhere in the middle of the Foxier quad that I flew a while back had um, kind of more like 6S freestyle type motors on there. And the Chimera actually has 1250 kV. So just a little less. Um, but I think these motors look nice. They have a nice sort of anodized red inlay on top of the stator here. Um, nice thick copper coils on the inside of this motor and a standard size nut. They have hollow core shafts and four bolts on the bottom holding it on and quite beasty arms. We have at least six millimeter carbon arms here with these four bolts on the bottom. You wanna go over this entire quad also before you do your first flight uh, with a driver and make sure that you tighten up all these M3 bolts. A lot of my bolts from the factory were actually quite loose. Um, and that was also on the bottom of these motors. They were very, very loose. So be super careful there. Now, if we look at the side of this frame, there's a lot of room up front right here. If you want to put more components up inside this spot right here, um, it also has a receiver spot right there. I could have slid my TBS crossfire right there. That's probably where I should have put that. And actually looking at it now, the Immortal T mount is in the very front, not the back, Justin. So um, I was in a hurry when I was setting it up this morning because it was going to rain today and I had to have this hooked up super fast. Uh, so don't put your receiver on the bottom like me. This was just for flight test today. One other thing that I did notice about this um, is the spot right here is for um, the TBS crossfire setup. You're going to have RX, TX, 5 volt, and ground on this harness right here. Be careful when you're setting this up. Um, I would add just a little bit of hot glue on this just to hold this in because I, I'm not a big fan of having a receiver just plugged into a harness for a long range type of flight. I really want a solid soldered down connection there. So if I had the option to take the top off this thing and solder this directly down to the flight controller, that's what I'd probably recommend versus having a little plug there. That vibrates loose at all with these motors. Um, that's going to be a problem and it's going to be a fail safe in an RTL. Uh, type of situation and cool because Betaflight now has returned to land and it will actually come back now with a new update and come down and land uh, whereas before it would just come back hover over the home point to you lost battery or regain signal and uh, hopefully not drop to the ground now up front on this camera too I've got the original air unit back here with 1080p DVR and plenty of camera protection up front with the original DJI FPV camera a lot of people like that one I do like the fact that it does have a standoff in the front down here for a frontal crash and I've, I've been mentioning lately i wish they had a, a lot of these designs lately don't have a standoff on the top but i feel like a standoff on the top and the bottom just a little more carbon up up high would give this camera a little more protection uh, in a frontal crash it seems like it does need some protection up top so um, it's usually open up here on a lot of designs now again plenty of truck body here for a large battery you fit even up to like my Swell Pro 5000 milliamp will fit completely from front to back right there. Uh, it makes a really big and heavy quad, so be prepared for that. The other thing is that I noticed that this is an over under motor design. The motors in the front are over and under in the back. So they do have some prop overlap right here, um, which if you're using really flimsy props, and I have kind of an example of one of them um, sitting around here somewhere. I haven't used these props yet because of the amount of flex that these have. And these are the Gym Fan Long Range 7035. Um, these would probably be fine on the Chimera 7 because you don't have any prop overlap. But if you do a hard turn, these have a lot of flex. And if you have a, a prop that has a lot of flex on this type of design with overlap, 
you could have a prop strike. Um, and if you have a prop strike, you're going down. Um, so that's not a good thing either. So be very careful there. And I recommend using the uh, HQ props. These are some HQ uh, by blade props. I'll put the links down below if I can find these for you because these fly great. They're super smooth and they're efficient. So here is the Call of 7 all folded up. And uh, I did just go off camera really quick and um, kind of just put all my weight on these and crank them down. I, I moved my Immortal T when I did that. I had some of these in the way. So uh, just put your Immortal T up front in the proper spot up front. So uh, th that'll be great there. But this takes a lot of force to press this, so it's not going to accidentally get pressed. So um, that's really good news. Um, I, I don't like the fact that the back one is on the bottom side of the quad. I mean, it's not going to accidentally get pushed on takeoff, but it's weird that you have a release lever uh, near the ground back here. So uh, in, in, in looking at this, let's just see how much clearance we have back here. I'm just going to push this down again and let things go in to lock into place. And this time, let's see the lever. It seems to uh, be disengaged somehow back here. Maybe if I really crank on it and just get it to lock. I wonder if the, the lever just gave way there completely. Doesn't seem to be working now. Um, okay, there we go. You have to go all the way back and it locks up and then this will be kind of pointing at the ground. So make sure you bring it all the way back and you'll hear a click and a lock. Um, and this one seems to be easier to push than the one on the front. The one on the front takes a lot more uh, pressure to release, but this weird having um, that I wish that was on top of the quad. And I mentioned that before um, in our live stream unboxing of, of the Call of 7. I wish it was, definitely wish it was on the top somehow. Um, but there's not a lot of room and that would take up part of our battery space. So um, they put it on the bottom, but it is facing the ground. So, um, but that's enough about that. That's all my advice for you guys to get started flying a 7 inch. Um, super important to please, by all means, um, do not fly this controller. You may fail safe, uh, especially with the O3 version. It looks like they might have an O3 version coming out. We also have uh, uh, what seems to be they're going to have a run cam link wasp version and also um, the walk snail avatar coming up for this one. So pretty much any of the FPV systems, including the HD systems, and you can get analog version. The analog version is actually a pretty good deal with TBS Crossfire Nano. $419 is not a bad price. So I'll put my links down below, guys. If you want to support the channel, grab one from my links as always. And uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up on this video, subscribe, and I'll bring you more um, honest opinions from the heart right here on the channel, guys. Take care. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.